Hey everybody, this video will describe how to create a pickup object in the Unreal Engine. In previous videos I've created this kind of dark lit night scene that has some fog in the background. Uh, and a couple other things like a flashlight or night vision. This video will talk about a different kind of interaction of how to create a uh, pickup object. I can be able to pick up a static mesh that has physics applied to it, pick it up, move it around, throw it around, do whatever I, must, I want, might want to do with it, and then drop it uh, with a key press. So the first thing we're going to create is an input for this. So um, if I go to Edit Project Settings, we're going to go to Inputs. And this is going to be another action mapping. So I've got some other previous action mappings in here. Let's create a new one. And then we're going to say uh, Pick Up. And I'm going to use the Middle Mouse button for this. So we'll type in Middle, Middle Mouse button. So when I hold down the Middle Mouse button and move the mouse around, then I can still hold on to an object when I let go of the middle mouse button uh, I'm going to release that object let it fall back down okay so that's an action mapping I have a character blueprint in here so if I click on that I have some other uh, blueprint nodes in here we're going to come back to our mouse movement so let's go ahead and move that down uh, here and we're going to use that in a little while later with this but underneath the mouse movement I'm going to right click and we're going to find our pickup action event that we have there you go all right, so we need a reference to our camera. So in our viewport, we have our camera that is going to be where we're looking from and looking towards. So we need a reference to that camera. So let's drag our camera in here to get a reference. Move this kind of over here. And we need two things. Um, well, first off, let's build the line trace by channel. So we're going to need like an invisible line of how this is going to work. A visible line that's going to be created from the camera, looking outwards to find to see if that line hits another object. If it does, then I can pick up that object if it's within a certain distance. Um, so from our action pickup, I'm going to click pressed, and we're going to add a line trace by channel. So that's what this node is going to do, is create an invisible line that allows me to trace a distance between two points, the start and end point. What I want to trace, I want to trace the camera's original position and then a distance away from that. So from the camera, I want to drag out and choose get world location world location, the original position of that. Then I also want to drag from the camera and say get forward vector. Okay. So I need these two nodes when we have all this stuff over there. All right, so I'm going to connect the get world location directly to the start. I want to know the original position of the camera um, to determine where the start of this line trace is going to be. From the get forward vector, I'm going to drag out from that, and I'm going to do vector times float. Okay. And this is going to be the distance away from the camera that it's going to start. So let's type in a value of like 250. You may change that later. This is the distance away from the camera that the object's going to be uh, floating in front of or being held in front of. So let's do 250. Uh, that's a float time or vector times float. And I'm going to drag out from that. And we're going to do vector plus vector. Vector plus vector. Okay, so we just need to move everything over a little more. And that's going to go to the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you like a cleaner uh, scenario, we can move this to the bottom. Hold down control and move that to the bottom one. And then get world location, we can drag it to the top of that plus. So the get world location plus uh, the get forward vector times 250 is going to go into the end of the line trace. Here we go. All right, so let's move these things over so it's not too long. That'll work. So from the line, tra line trace by channel, I'm going to drag out the execute, and we're going to create a branch, which is an if statement. It says, if this is true, then do something. So if that line trace is true and it's created properly, then, um, then allow us to pick up an object is going to be the overall goal. All right, so from the out hit of the line trace, uh, so as it hits a new object, as this line's created and it hits a new object, collides with a new object, we're going to choose uh, break hit result. There you go, so something like that. I'm going to open that up, and we're going to use a couple of these out nodes from the break hit result. Now, the next thing we need to do is a physics component. Um, so in the blueprint over here in the add component, we're going to click that and I'm going to type in physics. F 
physics handle is what we're looking for, physics handle. Okay. It doesn't put a location to that, but we'll add a location to it later. But we need that physics handle. All right, so from the true of the branch, we're gonna drag out, and we're gonna search for grab component at location of the physics handle. Grab component at location of physics handle. Just gonna move that down and then move this back up. There you go. So if the line trace is true, it finds an object to collide with, then grab an object, whatever is in front of us that we can pick up that has physics applied to it according to this physics handle. All right, so from our break hit result, here's how we connect this to the component and the grab location. Okay, so from the hit component, we're gonna drag out from that and connect that directly to the component of the grab component at location. So whatever object this line trace is hitting against, we're gonna be able to grab that component. So then I'm gonna drag out from hit component to a blank area and choose get world location. Okay. And then connect that up to the grab location. Okay. Uh, this world location is this forward vector from the camera times 250. So it's going to be 250 units away from the camera. That's what that get world location gets from the hit component. All right, so that should be enough for that part. We need to come back up here to this um, action pressed or released because that's going to allow us to hold an object. So move this down some. But I want to be able to release that object. So if I let go of the minimize button, it should release that object. So I'm going to drag from released and we'll choose release component. And what component? The physics handle. There you go. So I'll move this over so everything's not overlapping. There you go. So when I press it, it's going to grab whatever object it finds in front of the camera and hold on to it. When I release it, it's going to let go of that object. Now, we need to make one more adjustment. We're going to compile and save. We don't have any errors, so we're good. Move this down a little bit. We can go ahead and comment this out. So if I comment that out and say pick up object, okay, move this over here. So we need to make adjustments to the mouse. So as I move the camera around to be able to still hold the object in front of the camera. So let's kind of move this out. Okay, so from our mouse input yaw, which is the horizontal motion of the mouse, pitch is the vertical action. From the yaw, I'm going to drag out. And I'm going to choose set target location of the physics handle. So this, the physics handle we created, it tells the position of the physics uh, object to be held. So we'll do that and we'll move this down. All right, so we actually need to move this kind of way over here. Move this over here. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing for the controller pitch input. Whoops. Drag that out. Set target location of the physics handle. Can move that down here. There we go. All right, so then what goes into that new location is the location that we deemed from the camera and all of this connection here. Okay, so I'm going to take all of those nodes for the camera, copy, move up here to this area, and we'll paste that in. Move this over some more. And these nodes move down here more. Okay. And then the camera, get world location, and get forward vector times 250, and those two values added together get funneled into this new location here of both of those set target locations. Okay, there we go. So we can kind of clean this up just a little bit. Something like that. Move that down and move this out of the way. So we also need to add that uh, vector and location addition of the camera to the mouse input so it also move, move the object when the camera moves as well. Let's compile, save. So that's how we set up uh, a pickup object blueprint for the player character. Now we need something to interact with, so let's go in here and minimize that and pull in some static meshes. So let's go to basic and let's put it, not an empty after, a cube. 
If you have static meshes, this would be um, a good time to pull them in. I'm just going to pull in some of those. So uh, some random objects that we can interact with. Go, cone. Let's put it on the ground floor. All right, so each one of these, I need to come in here and select those, and I have to have the ability to turn on physics for this. Uh, so if I scroll in around in the details panel, find physics of this cone. Let's simulate physics. Let's go to the sphere and simulate physics. I can turn on mass as well. I'm not really calculating mass right now uh, for the physics handle, but if I turn on simulate physics for all of these, there you go. Then I can now interact with everything. So if I go play, and if I look at one of these and hit the middle mouse button, now I can pick that object up and let go of it, and pick that object up again and let go of it, and it'll kind of react with physics. Let's do the same thing with the sphere. Pick that up, move that around. Here's my cone. Oh, get closer to it. Here we go. I can move it around. I can also throw it in the air. Okay, I'll flop around, fly around there. There's a cylinder. I can pick that up, and it'll still interact with other things. Interact with that wall. And I throw it up in the air. So now each one of these objects, if physics is applied to it, can interact with this uh, physics pickup interaction that we added. All right, so one last thing, uh, we'll dismiss that for now, uh, that we can add is dependent on a mass scale of an object. So go back into our player character blueprint. Let's um, expand this stuff out a little more. Move all of this down. And let's add another if statement question. May need to be a little longer. And what we're doing here is just going to add another branch after our existing branch. So we'll say branch. Okay. And this condition we're going to change. Uh, we'll say hit component. And we're going to drag that out. And we'll say uh, get mass. Get mass of another object. Get mass. Okay. So get mass of whatever the object is that we're trying to pick up. And from that return value, we're going to uh, hit out, or drag out from that and do a less than. Float less than float. Then we're going to determine a value. So if the mass is less than, let's say, 300, then we can pick up this object. If it's more than 300, we can't pick up this object. So let's then connect that Boolean uh, from the less than to the condition. All right, let's compile and save. So now let's go in here to our objects and let's say our cube is has a mass above 300, so that would be like 500. We can't pick up that object. Uh, the ball can have a mass of 100. The cone can have a mass of 200. And the cylinder over here can have a mass of 301. Okay? Alright, so that should be more. So the cone and the cube should not be able to be picked up. Um, hit my middle mouse button to try to pick it up. It won't work because that uh, cube, I can still move it around a little bit. Uh, let's try with the cylinder. Can't pick it up. I'm kick it around, move it around a little bit. So I can't pick it up with my pickup option, but I can pick up the sphere because it's less than 300. Pick up the cone because it's less than 300. I can go back and make my adjustment to the cylinder and say 299 and go try again. So if I pick up the cylinder now, that should work because it is less than 300, but I still can't pick up the cube. So that way you can set up some objects that can be picked up uh, with physics and other objects that can't be picked up with physics. So I can still move it around from a physics object, but I can also pick up the object if the mass is less than 300. But I can't pick up the object like this cube if the mass is more than 300. Another way to kind of refine this further. All right, so that wraps up this video on how to uh, create a pickup interaction uh, dealing with the mass and physics of an object.